It's been a known fact amongst hospice staff around the world, the stronger a patient and their family's religious beliefs are, the more likely they are to have a bad over-medicalized death. It is something that is being quite heavily studied at the moment in the hope that somehow changes can be made in the future. But why is it so common? Why do I so rarely, rarely see a super religious person in the hospice that I work at? Before we begin, we post death and dying related videos every Friday. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's talk the religion plus dying equation. I want to preface this video by saying two things. One, as we are in Australia, we will be focusing on the Christian religious makeup, as while we are a pretty secular population, or so our census data tells us, the biggest religious makeup that we have in Australia is by far Christian. However, keep in mind that this issue seems to extend to all large religions. Secondly, what do I mean by strongly religious? Okay, so there's no particular definition, but from my experience of traveling between hospice and various hospital wards, we are looking at people who have religion at the front of their mind at all times when making decisions, who will automatically thank God when something goes right, who attend religious services on a very regular basis. If they have God on the brain, they're probably the ones we're talking about. Not so much those who go to church once a year at Christmas and only ask God for help if they haven't studied for a test. You get the idea. And we're not making fun of these people and their beliefs. It is simply very unfortunate that these two topics tend not to line up well for them. What does Christianity say about end of life? Here's the thing about religion. Two people can be talking about the same God, saying they believe in the same God, but have very different ideas of what that God is like. He could be very loving, forgiving, and want what's best for you. Or he could be vindictive and something that should be feared because he will send you to hell if you step out of line. And every priest, pastor, and deacon seems to have a different view on what they want their followers to believe in. So keep that in mind as we go on. So when it comes to Christian beliefs that impact end of life, the first point is the one that most people think of right off the bat. And that's our mortal life is sacred. It's a gift from God. The Ten Commandments teach followers to cherish life and not to murder, because life is a gift from God and their purpose in life is to serve God and protect life. This is the bit that makes this type of Christian person protect the unborn life. It also inspires them to protest against physician-assisted suicide. And when it comes to end-of-life care, you must try absolutely every treatment possible to stay alive because life is sacred. You can already see how this may be problematic. And this whole, I must try every treatment possible regardless if it has any possibility of working simply because if I don't, I'll be damned to hell forever, is the reason why we very, very rarely see these people in hospice. You will see them in hospital wards and frankly, it can be quite disturbing. Especially when the family is just as religious. Because once the patient is unconscious, the family is in control. Let's face it, most people do not have an advanced care directive even though I keep harping on about it. And it becomes hell when the patient is not overly religious, but the loudest person in the room, often the one threatening doctors and nursing staff, is overly religious. Luckily for me, I've only had to witness this a few times because occasionally I do relief work at the adjacent hospital. And one particular incident comes to mind and sums this all up really well. A small, frail, 90-something year old man had been in hospital for a few weeks. He goes into cardiac arrest, according to the doctors, about the fourth time since he's been in. But because they have to do what the family wishes, they perform CPR. They bring him back to life, or what there was of it. The family is praising Jesus. An hour later, he codes again. The family is screaming at the staff to save him. It's not his time, they say. God hasn't sent them a sign that it's time for him to go. Staff bring him back to life. Two hours later, he codes again. This goes on all night. How that poor man didn't die from a splintered rib through the heart, I don't know. And maybe someone watching this who is strongly religious can answer me this in the comments. But did the family believe God would be proud of them? Happy at what they had done to their father and keeping him alive? Do they believe the suffering inflicted upon their father was not indeed done by them but by the hospital staff? Do they believe God wanted their father to suffer in order to go to heaven? And do they view those who choose to cease treatment and go into hospice as failures to God? I don't know. Some of the priests that I've spoken to say, yeah, there definitely is parts of that in many of these people. 
Many believe suffering brings them closer to God. Because throughout my schooling, we had religion classes. And while I wasn't really paying all that much attention, even I remember the parts about loving others, helping the suffering, trusting in your Lord and Saviour. But I suspect these people view love as keeping people alive because life is sacred, helping the suffering soul over the body, and trusting that when CPR fails, then God has said it's time. And for the record, if you want to be kept alive no matter what, that is fine. That is your right. Sort of. Legally, yes. Ethically and morally, yeah. But let's assume that you are paying for it yourself and not draining the funds of our underfunded healthcare system and not taking up a bed space that could be used to actually save someone that could be saved. Assuming that's the case, then okay, that is your right. It is your right to access treatment and by extension of that, experience an over-medicalized death if that is what you want and that is what you believe is the right thing to do. No one is going to stop you from having that. How can it change? What studies are showing so far is that these particular individuals have focused their beliefs so narrowly down to one point, the whole mortal life is sacred point, that they forget or ignore the other parts. A very common thing to do for human beings. And I will lean on all my years of Catholic schooling here to make a few points which I believe these particular Christian patients and families apparently forgot when they read their Bible. God is ultimately sovereign over our life and death and has authority over our days, not your choice of medical treatment. Followers are called to love each other and relieve each other's suffering. A follower's hope is supposed to reside in Christ, which is the most important tenet considering any of these issues. Even though they may fear death, death is an end, but it's not the end. And it's when thinking about these parts of religion, the often conveniently forgotten parts where we can find change. If priests, pastors, etc. were to talk to their congregation more about these parts and how they should be used practically, particularly at end of life, followers may not believe that they must die in pain. Like I've said before, we have various religious leaders from various religions that offer support at our hospice. And we've had this conversation many times. Our priest chooses to look at all the factors of the religion rather than just one point and has said on many occasions that to not look at all points is to be a disservice to God and that a Christian leader who neglects to educate on all points is only serving their human ego, which frankly makes a lot of sense. All the studies that I've read so far conclude that in order for this issue to change, it is religious leaders that need to step up and perhaps they need to be educated about end of life as well. I have always been of the opinion that you can believe whatever religion you like, but A, don't push it on others, and B, use your critical thinking to look at the entire picture, not just those points being yelled at the loudest or the easiest to follow. And religious leaders have a big part to play in all of this, and while I have my own perhaps cynical views on why certain religious leaders may choose to conveniently hide certain points from their followers, there's no doubt there are many out there who generally want the best for their congregation. But sometimes I question whether they are scared of death and dying themselves. So if you are a religious leader or even a strongly religious individual and you just happen to have concerns about death and dying and what the options are at end of life, please feel free to book an online consult with us. Or if you're nearby, we can come to you. This is a non-judgmental space. We don't have to agree on everything to respect and have empathy for one another. And soon we will be doing a video on what each of the major religions approaches to end of life decisions are. So stay tuned for that. And with that, go talk death.